Bulu Minaka, I'm Linda Form, I started Suva. I love listening to Today FM because they play latest music and they rock. Hi, my name is Asnate, I'm from Ba, I love listening to Today FM, Today FM rocks. Bula, I'm a character from Nandi, we love listening to Today FM. Here in Nandi, it rocks. Hi, I'm Shania, I'm from Lotoka, and I love the Today FM and it rocks. Today's hit music on Today FM. In the news tonight, Akbar says she belongs here. Woman appears in court over meth find. And police admit to weaknesses that needs fixing. From the studios of FBC Suva, Jackie Spade. Minister for Education, Heritage and Arts Rosie Akbar today stated that she proudly calls herself a Fijian and does not see herself as a Vulangi. Speaking during the International Conference on Forced Labor and Migration at the University of Fiji Saweni campus, Akbar asked how she could be a visitor when her grandparents and father were born and buried in Fiji. This was in direct relation of the events for the past fortnight when the Indo-Fijian community has been attacked by Sidelpa MPs, Ratanaingama Lalambalavu and also Moses Mbulitavu. The two have branded Indo-Fijians as Vulangi or visitors, with Mbulitavu also shaming Indo-Fijian women, calling them unfaithful wives and the reason they have been stabbed to death. Details with Philippe Naikaso. Fiji has come a long way since the indentured period, tackling the issues of identity crisis in the most positive way, and today, the Minister for Education made her stand clear. My ancestors are buried here. My dad is buried here. My mother will be buried here. I will be buried here. My children will be buried here. So definitely, definitely don't call me Abulangi. Don't. Akbar then hitting out at those who have branded the Indo-Fijian community as Vulangi. I certainly do not see myself as a Bulangi, Bulangi in this country. This is my home and this is a home to many of us and it should remain a home to many of us, us and those that are going to come after us, our children and their children and their children. Fiji has also been praised for the emphasis on cultural activities, celebrations and vernacular languages so that these are safeguarded. Gurumitias are gone. We honour their memory, but we must steadfastly continue the search for the fundamental truth of their experience. We owe them at least that much. The conference, which ends on Wednesday, will also look at different topics of forced labor in Fiji. Philip and I, Kasso, FBC News. Sadelpa's silence on the racist remarks made by Moses Simbulitavu and its former president, Ratana Ngama Lalambalavu, speaks volumes of its leadership. This is how Hope Party leader Tupondrani Dalo described Sadelpa a few weeks after the racial outburst, with no action being taken against them. Ali Kimbia with the story. Tupo Unrao Nindalo has condemned comments made by Mbuli Tavo and Ratu Nengama and he has pointed out party leader Sitiveni Rambuka's silence on the issue. If they have a party leader that's ethnocentric, has a history of ethnocentricity, uh, has brought chaos to a country uh, more than once before, uh, you don't expect the party to reflect anything other than that. Efforts to try and get comments from Rambuka and party president Rofilipe Tuisawao remains fertile Drown Indalo says Sodelpa should stop claiming that a lot of Itoke people support the party when records showed that a lot of Itoke people voted for the Fiji First Party. They seem to think they're the only party that represents the Toke. Uh, it's clear from the numbers that uh, the governing party uh, represents the majority of Toke. Meanwhile, Mulitavo was taken in for a caution interview with police last week. However, the public awaits what action the party will take, if any. Alikimbia, FBC News. 
A clerical officer charged with being in possession of illicit drugs has been further remanded. Merisini Asenate Luisa Lendua appeared before the Suva Magistrates Court today. Lendua has been charged with one count of importing illicit drugs and one count of being in possession of illicit drugs, namely methamphetamine. She was arrested last Friday after picking up a parcel at the Suva Post Office. The drugs weighing 101.4 grams and valued at $115,000 was packed in a bottle of peanut butter, which was sent from America. The magistrate said the matter was serious and a formal bail application needs to be filed before the court can decide on her bail. The case will be recalled on July 17th for bail hearing. The police force has admitted it has not properly dealt with some recent issues raised by the public about lack of service. Assistant Commissioner of Police Rusia Tetendravu says the force has the manpower and the capability to fight crime, but they cannot quickly be present everywhere. Kelly Vavala reports. The police are calling on Fijians to assist when officers are not present during unexpected situations. I admit that there are some of the issues that have been coming up which is not uh, properly dealt with at, uh, at, uh, at our initial exits, but uh, we are trying our best. We are trying our best to get that, uh, what, what can I say, the fear out of the members of the community that we are not doing anything. No, no, we are doing as much as we can do, but there are some cases that we are not there just during that time of the incident. FBC News spoke to a family in Numbu village, Lombasa, who were living in fear following a robbery last week. One family member was assaulted during the incident. At the time then I call, I rang the police to any call, eh? no one answered. Then I called my, called the police from Lombasa. So they turn up and about few minutes, then I tried again to any for of police post. Then they answer me, no vehicle was there. Very poor service. Assistant Commissioner of Police Rusia Titunravu says such cases need the assistance of the whole community. This will not be at, at everywhere, eh, at all times. So I'll fall back uh, to the, the, the community at large eh, to assist us in regards to that. Tundravo's comments come after multiple reports of robberies and assault cases from around the country. Kelly Vavala, FBC News. Suva may soon have two specialized port facilities, one for cargo and containers, the other for tourists and local passengers. In light of the increasing number of ships berthing at the port, the aging infrastructure is a major challenge for the Fiji Ports Corporation Limited. FPCL Chief Finance Officer says over the years they have done wharf assessments and cleared up space for more containers. The Ports Corporation Chief Finance Officer says they want to create a separate cargo port from the main Suva port. It's in a very strategic location, so we want to con convert uh, the Suva port to a tourism port, like a, for cruise ships, which is again another question which I'll cover in detail, and, and then migrate uh, the Suva port into a specialized cargo location. FPCL also wants to do some organizing to improve efficiency. Change the organization capacity. We are partnering with uh, a local consultancy company and, and looking across all, all functional areas to improve our efficiency. He adds they have also aligned themselves to sustainable development goals. And we have green energy another consultant across us which are implementing a green energy project uh, which we are having an internal engineer who is again uh, in charge of the green energy. Another major challenge faced by the corporation is retaining local employees. He says they are not able to retain their young engineers as they go overseas for scholarships and better lives. Kritika Kumar, FBC News. Up ahead, officers learn tricks of drug fight and North vendors get much needed stalls. Details after the break. Bula, go and minuni merekerake on the hotel tak ada orang nombor lepem, nombor dua lesep. Nimbula, ayah wo meli, ayah wo titi umai mata niway, on the hotel tak ada orang nombor lepem. On the hotel dia nombor seres wo nombor lepem, nombor dua lesep esok. Nisambul belakang lebih binti, gonga lomelitau ni lebih bah. 
É um ango é muito simbólico rock rock é um do talita cá na barrong é nam bula fm bula fm nam bandua nser bula fm nam bandua nser As police continue their efforts to address drug abuse and illicit trafficking, 34 of their officers are currently undergoing a narcotics law enforcement workshop. Eight officers from the Shandong narcotics team in China are facilitating the two-week workshop. Lena Reese with the story. With the increase in number of drug busts in recent months, the Fiji police force is aiming to help their officers enhance their knowledge in the fight against drugs through this workshop. So we are taking a like holistic approach here from all the officers from all uh, the units that are investigating drugs. Our intelligence, drug intelligence, our enforcement uh, operational people, our prosecutors, uh, also rope in our forensic uh, people so that at least all are aware uh, of the things uh, that are happening. The Charge d'Affaires of the People's Republic of China believes this partnership will help keep borders safe and strengthen ties between the two countries. Drugs, indigenous people's health, breed crime and corruption, undermine sustainable development, endanger national security and the world peace. It's a common threat to us all. Drug control is a common responsibility of the international community. Deputy Commissioner of Police Rusia Tetunrabu has stressed that they will continue training officers to counter the drug problem in Fiji. Lina Reis, FBC News. Representatives of the five Melanesian spearhead group attending the regional security strategy meeting have been urged to work together in the interest of the safety and security of its people. Permanent Secretary for Defense Manasa Lesuma made the comments in his opening remarks in the meeting currently underway in Nandi. The need to have a security strategy in the face of ever-increasing and emerging threats to peace and security in the region was also stressed. Representatives were also told that as leaders, they have a greater responsibility to ensure that their decisions on regional security should have positive impacts on the lives of its people. The MSG member countries include Papua New Guinea, Solomon Islands, Vanuatu, New Caledonia and Indonesia. We need to have a strategy that is relevant to our particular security needs from law and order perspective, maritime security, as well as natural disaster. But what is of great importance is to have a strategy that is linked to our respective national security strategies. Charged with making a false declaration, Charles Mbamba has been declared fit to participate in court proceedings. This is after an evaluation was conducted and a report compiled by St. Giles Hospital was submitted. The Chief Magistrate told Bamba's counsel to ensure his client is present in court in the next sitting. Bamba was not present in court today. He has been charged with one count of making a false declaration. It is alleged that between August 1st and October 15th last year, Bamba made false statements on social media by publishing falsified voter lists and other false information related to the voter lists on Facebook, which he knew to be false. The matter was adjourned to August 14th, 2019. Several standardized roadside stalls have just been erected along the Lambasa to Savo Savo Highway in Vanua Levu. While roadside stalls are, are already common sight in Viti Levu, Vanua Levu is only just getting its share of stalls. Eleanor Tarangaiview reports this assistance from the Ministry of Trade has been received with much excitement from the vendors. These strong steel structures, erected barely two weeks ago, is a far cry from the shabby makeshift stalls that have been worn down over the years and used by roadside vendors. Before we were using a makeshift shed and we would get wet every time it rained, but now with this one it's really nice and wonderful and clean as well. Over the last month, these stalls were erected along the highway from Lambasa to Savo Savo in villages and communities that expressed their interest in getting one. This one at Loma Loma Village is being managed by the youth group. It's really benefited the youths here, especially since we have been trying to sell our honey from our bee farm before we used to sell from the bus stop. Standardized roadside stalls like this one provide our rural communities with a physical location where they are able to operate and earn a living. 
I used to take my produce to sell at the Lambasa market. Now I no longer have to spend money on traveling there and back. I just get whatever I can from the farm and sell it here. The stalls which have been certified to withstand Category 5 cyclones are given for free but are done so under a lease agreement between the vendors and the Ministry of Trade. Eleanor Turangaiviu, FBC News. Turning overseas, a British study has found that diet and exercise can help almost everyone lower their risk of dementia. Researchers followed nearly 200,000 people over eight years and found a healthy lifestyle can lower the risks. And now it's business time with Koroi. Thanks, Jackie. Coming up, previously registered businesses are now missing. And in growing Fiji, telecommunication union boss meet the president. Stay with us. Hi, Bula. I'm Selai from Nandi. I love Gold FM, only the classic hits. Hi, my name is uh, Sotiana here in Bar. We love listening to Gold FM, only the classic hits. Bula, I'm Miri. I'm from Lotoka and I love Gold FM because they play all my classic hits. Hi, my name is Fiona from Tavua and I love listening to Gold FM, only the classic hits. Hi, I'm Ini from Rakiraki. I love Gold FM, only the classic hits. Gold FM, only the classic hits. The percentage of women in senior positions in the public circle has seen a major boost. The Ministry for Women, Children and Poverty Alleviation reveals that 54% of civil servants are women and 29% of these women are in managerial positions. Minister Responsible Merisaini Buniwanga says her ministry is at the forefront of empowering women through gender equality. Our ministerial programs continue to promote women's economic empowerment by supporting women-led income generating projects and aims to eliminate violence against women and girls. The political will of government is reflected in our international obligations, like the conventions on the elimination of all forms of discrimination against women. Major rehabilitation works in the Lamy area will commence from 8.30 tonight. The Fiji Road Authority says that works will begin from 8.30 p.m. to 5 a.m. daily for the next two weeks. The target is to reconstruct the worst pavement sections between Andonumai and Lamy Town. As a consequence, the road will temporarily reduce to a single lane. However, full traffic management team will be present on site to guide motorists safely through the site. There is a major disconnect between farmers and the Fiji Sugar Corporation. This was highlighted by the permanent secretary in the Prime Minister's office, Yogesh Karan, during his visit to Lambasa. Karan says he was disappointed with the lack of cooperation from FSC field management in helping farmers address their issues. He says the government has provided some assistance to the corporation and they need to ensure that the assistance trickles down to all farmers. When the farmers came for assistance, you know, they, um, they achieved some of the attitude that, uh, that has been given by FSC is really surprising you know, and I'm very disappointed with that. So I've addressed this with the GM that, uh, and that uh, farmers must are the most important people uh, for us at the moment. If they're not on the field uh, planting cane, then they won't exist. Over 1,000 businesses previously registered with the Fiji Revenue and Customs Authority are now missing. FRCS Chief Executive Visvanath Das has revealed these businesses popped up when they compiled a list of companies which will be subject to the VET monitoring system come August 1st. Das says these companies never updated their details with the FRCS over the years despite there being a legal requirement for all businesses to do so. About 20% of the businesses are actually seized operations or no longer tra traceable or there's no contact points for them. So effectively it means that tax office data record has not been updated. It's the start of a new week and to give us all the latest on the market update, we have Sinifa from HFC to tell us more. Let's have a quick look at our last week's trading on our local stock market. Close to 83,000 shares were traded, bringing in more than $108,000. Nine listed entities recorded market activity, of which seven noted share price changes. Communications Fiji shares further improved by $0.05, cents, closing the week at $6.05. Freebird Institute shares decreased by $0.26, cents, 
and settled the week at $2.70. Fiji Care Insurance Limited shares continued their increase by $0.05, cents, ending the week at $2.20. Fiji Television shares were up by $0.25 cents and closed at $3.80. Contiki Finance shares fell by one cent to end the week at a dollar one. Shares of the rice company of Fiji ended the week at seven dollars, noting an increase of 29 cents. The Fijian holding shares showed a drop by eight cents to close off the week at a dollar 85. The week concluded at a market value of 3.62 billion dollars. That's a wrap from our local stock market, Inaka. Here are today's exchange rates as set this morning. The foreign exchange market had relaxed slightly after the action of last week. The Fiji dollar was down against the Chinese yuan and the U.S. greenback, but rose against the currencies of our two major trading partners, Australia and New Zealand, and also was up against the Japanese yen, but slipped slightly against the Kina and the euro. Looking at the commodities, gold and silver were up while there was a drop in oil prices. In growing Fiji, Fijian President His Excellency Major General Chiochi Konrote receives a courtesy call from the Secretary General of the International Telecommunication Union, Hulin Zhao, at the State House today. President Konrote, while meeting with Mr. Zhao, also presented him with a gift. Zhao is an information and communication technology engineer and has served in a variety of senior management positions at ITU. He served two elected terms as director of ITU's Telecommunication Standardization Bureau, which develops technical standards to ensure worldwide ICT interoperability. Zhao also met with the permanent secretary for the office of the Prime Minister, Yogesh Karan, later today. That's it from Business Tonight. Sports is up next week, Jamie. Thank you, Korean. Good evening and sports tonight. PG football plays waiting game. And Unai sees Serevi out to make a name for herself in that ball. This and more coming up. My name is Neha and I'm from Kadavi. And Mirchi FM it's hot. Hama chale nasori se Mirchi FM bo julu. I'm Shara Pukash Bhattata, and Tava me Mirchi FM Subconcern and Mirchi FM is hot. Hi, my name is Prashant, I live in Suba. I love Mirchi FM because Mirchi FM is hot. Hi, I'm Shane. I love uh, listening to Mirchi FM because it's awesome and it's hot. Hi, I'm Rachel. And I'm Shavi. We, we love listening to Mirchi FM in Lambasa. Mirchi FM, it's hot. Fiji has indicated its intention to host the 2027 Pacific Games. Fasanak President Makrita Lenoa says Fiji verbally informed the Pacific Games Council yesterday. Lenoa says they will now have to follow the process of putting together Fiji's bid to host the 2027 Games, which they will work on with government. She says a few other countries, including Guam, informed the Pacific Games Council yesterday of their interest to host the 2027 meet as well. Lino says it's all verbal at this stage, but it will take about a year to put everything together for an official bid. Fiji NOC had expressed the interest for Fiji to bid for the hosting of the 2027 Pacific Games. So there will be a process followed, and it's something that we will have to work with the government of Fiji for. So when we go back, then we will meet with the ministry and stakeholders to prepare for the bid. Both the national men's and women's football sides are crossing their fingers that results in their respective pools will go their way. The equation for both teams is simple. They both have to win their last pool game and hope other results are in their favor. Akula Dama reports. Roy Krishna, Tito Wondawanga and Christopher Wasasala scored a double each in the second half as Fiji defeated Tuvalu 10-1. Christophe Gamel says they have to pray now that New Caledonia will lose to Tahiti in their match currently underway and Fiji have to beat Solomon Islands in their next match to make the gold medal playoff. Uh, we will be ready for uh, uh, what will happen. We know that there is different scenario. Uh, we could, uh, we are still in for the gold, we pray. 
for uh, two nights. But honestly, if we play like that uh, against Solomon, uh, we will have uh, worked so hard for nothing. Not the bronze or not even for the gold. Women's team is in a similar situation after beating New Caledonia four goals to nil today. Uh, well, the equation is uh, we need to win against uh, Tonga in our last game and uh, hoping uh, someone lose uh, points in the last game. So for us to make it into the goal playoff, it's, uh, that's the equation. But if someone does win uh, their final game, then it's, uh, uh, we need to go for a finish, good finish uh, to make it into the bronze playoff. So as it is, uh, we are very dependent on uh, Samoa's result uh, on Thursday. Both teams will play their final pool matches on Thursday. Aquila Lama, FBC Sports. A lot of Fijians living in Samoa have been coming out to support Team Fiji at the Pacific Games. Some to enjoy the atmosphere and different sports competitions being held, while some are doing that and also taking advantage of the business opportunities available at the regional meet. Aquila Lama with this report. Few days at the Pacific Games one cannot miss, especially if you are from Fiji. This food stall, which belongs to Philomena Mbari Radule from Tavua Levu village in Tavua. For the beginning of the game, because of bad weather, there was none at all, I tell you. But we managed to hit our target. But for the past two days, during the sevens here in Mari's ground, oh yes, I tell you, it has been good. And we've been hitting our target, yes. This is Philomena's fourth here in Samoa with the family as her husband is a banker. She says business is good and looks forward to another fruitful week. I always be motivated because my girl, my little daughter, our little daughter goes to school and uh, she goes to one of the prominent school in Fiji and the fundraising for the school always be competitive. So this is where I breed my interest of doing this kind of business. Philomena sells lovo, roti and curry and lemon juice at her stall. She says Fijians have been very supportive for the past week at the games in Samoa. Aquila Dama, FBC Sports. The Fiji men's touch rugby side got their Pacific Games campaign off to a great start. Fiji defeated Tokelau 13-1 to in their first match this morning. However, the side was put to the test by a structured Cook Islands team in their second game. Fiji winning 6-5 under the guidance of Captain Rusiate Uluimuala. When I see Serevi is excited about her first Pacific Games. The eldest daughter of Fijian Sevens legend Waisele Serevi is part of the American Samoa netball side. And while the family name may be synonymous with rugby, the 24-year-old says her interest lies elsewhere. Well, rugby is it's a family thing, but I kind of wanted to do something different. So, I'm, yeah, like you said, I'm the only one in my family that doesn't play rugby. I love to watch it, but it's not really my sport. And it's kind of weird, yeah. So it's weird because everybody plays rugby, and then I play netball and I roll. Yeah. Oh, so everybody was kind of busy. Dad's in uh, France right now getting ready for Olympic qualifiers. My sister's playing for the USA 15 team for the Super Series. So they're over there right now, and my yeah, the rest of my family are in the U.S. I am very excited. Just to be here, just to be around all these athletes is very exciting for me. Aquila Dama joins us live now from Samoa. Aquila, with the Pacific Games heading into the second week, how are things looking for Team VG? Talofa, Jamie, yes, uh, we have wrapped up day seven of the uh, 2019 Pacific Games are here in Apia Samoa and also the first day of uh, athletics. And um, uh, after the uh, 100 meter hits earlier this um, uh, afternoon, all the uh, three uh, Team Fiji sprinters are into the, um, they will feature in the semi-finals uh, tomorrow. Now, after watching the uh, five heats today, former Pacific Games uh, champion, John Ndelai, uh, shared uh, his um, um, thoughts about who can win that gold medal tomorrow. Well, uh, tomorrow. well, I spoke to him earlier this evening, and this is what he has to say. So Ban looks good, and I didn't count out the Bonsan, even though he's his favorite, but uh, I put my money on Bans to win the 100 tomorrow. The weakness is to start probably Bans is, is, I started today was really good, but uh, um, 
Donald's when he came out in the first 18, then he started to go on. But for me, Bas looks up this afternoon. Now, looking at the times posted by the three national sprinters, Tony Lemeki recorded the fastest time of 10.82 seconds. Banuve Tambakaudoro, 10.87 seconds, the second fastest out of um, the uh, Team Fiji sprinters. But the fastest time out of the 100-meter um, um, sprinters at the Pacific Games belongs to Kelvin Masoi of Samoa in a time of 10.70 seconds. Now, in the first semifinal, tomorrow, 100-meter semifinal, Albert Miller will will uh, run alongside Calvin Masoi and also uh, Jeremy Dodson, the favorite to take out the 100 meters uh, um, gold uh, here at the Pacific Games. Now in the second semi, Banuve Tambakaudoro, Tony Lemeki and also James uh, Joffrey of New Zealand will feature in the uh, second uh, semi-final. But Petro Vitangomaki recorded the fastest time in the um, 800 meter heats today, 1 minute 56.62 uh, seconds rather. And um, uh, also qualifying for the time for the final is Kameli Saundundu in a time of 1 minute 58.88 seconds. They'll feature in the final tomorrow. Well, tomorrow as well, we'll have the 100 meter hits for the women's and, of course, the finals for the men's as well, Jamie. Thanks for the update, Aquila. Now to the Flying Fijians. Head coach John McKee has named the 26 member extended squad that will take on the Maori All Blacks in Rotorua, New Zealand this Saturday. He has included Luke Tangi, Choeli Veteaki, Ratu Veromalo Vonga Koto, Johnny Daya, Mosese Voka, Frank Lomani, and Sir Pupeli Vularika in the squad. With a lot of strong players, Miki has included 11 new players who are not part of Fiji's historic 27-10 win over the Maori All Blacks over the weekend. Miki says it's a great opportunity to test the capability of his players against strong opponents. The Fiji Pearls lost their third pool match in the Netball World Cup currently underway in England. England beat New Zealand this morning to win the Men's Cricket World Cup final for the first time. In the longest men's final in recent years, Novak Djokovic won his fifth Wimbledon title after defeating eight-time Wimbledon champion Roger Federer. The match took four hours and 57 minutes. In today's Play of the Day, we take you back to Wimbledon. And while Novak Djokovic won the main prize, it was Roger Federer that came out victorious in the longest rally ever in a men's singles final. That's it from sports ahead in the world of the weird and wonderful. We tell you about how much it'll cost you to stay in a Japanese, Japanese castle. Jackie will have the details after the break. Umesh Chandra, our Kanta Chandra, my wife. I'm not radio Fiji to both Sundas and Suntai, both a chap program. Number one radio. Kumar Sami Naika, Gumbo Lugu Latoka, Radio Fiji to me, Purana Gana Lage, I may both a chalage. Kumar, Nakati Merata, Radio Fiji to Suntai. Radio Fiji to Deshki Dharkan. It's weather time now with Angie. Hello there and welcome to the weather world. What a lovely cold Monday. Yes, the cold season is currently underway. Hope you're keeping warm. Sunny but cold, that's the weather trend we are following at the moment. Now in the west, it was fine and dry. Had your leftover laundry to do, I'm sure it was the perfect timing. Eastwards from Back Harbor to Suva, fine but chilly. The night is expected to get more cold. And up north, active sunny spells, variable clouds loitering, light, shower, light showers might also spread out to parts of Lombasa. At sea, southeast winds 10 to 50 knots, moderate seas. For the tides, low tide at 11.43 p.m. with high tide at 5.55 p.m. Sunrise at 6.38. For tomorrow, it will be dry with bright sunny spells. Now, who wouldn't vouch for that? Too good for a Tuesday, maybe? Tomorrow's temps, the morning drops to 18 degrees but gradually settles to 30 or so degrees. And looking further on to Wednesday, warm one with sunshine, it's our favorite kind of weather, isn't it Jackie? Most definitely Angie, thanks so much for that. 
And in our Fijian Pulse tonight, after a great performance by the Flying Fijians on Saturday, we're asking, were you happy with the showing on Saturday? Saturday World is awesome. They played to the best. And I hope that uh, that momentum is kept till the World Cup that's coming uh, this year. Man. The fort is uh, the, the standard they now is the standard they know. It is a very good performance on Saturday. It was a great performance. It's a marvel to watch. And like the coach said, they still have some areas to fix. And I hope that will be ironed out in the next test match against the Mori Oblex. Uh, it's, uh, it's a very tough game for the boys. They perform in a good game now, but they got 70%. Uh, they need another 30 percent for build up uh, for the back to back uh, game in uh, New Zealand. In the world of the weird and the wonderful, have you ever wanted to spend time in a Japanese castle? Because who doesn't want to be treated like a king or queen, right? Recapping the main stories for tonight, Akbar says she belongs here. Woman appears in court over meth find, and police admit to weaknesses that needs fixing. For these stories and others, tune in daily to our sister radio station, Gold FM. Our poll question segment last week we had asked, should Moses Simbulitavu be disciplined by his party in parliament for his racist comments? 56% said yes. Now this week we're asking, has John McKee found the best players and combinations for the World Cup? Visit our FBC website to answer. And on to our first shot of the day for this week. This is a beautiful shot taken in Singatoka, depicting Fiji at its finest. Remember, you can send us newsworthy pictures and videos on email fbcnews at fbc.com.fj. Share it with us via Facebook page, FBC News. Follow and tweet us your news tips at fbc underscore news or hashtag FBC News. That was your FBC News for tonight. From the team and I, stay safe. Good night. Nadango Merea, Maramani Waya Manatuya Sawa, a waiting to put in the Nandi, Yao Domarata, and Navarro and a radio figure. They are Asna Vatili, our mother Monica. Don't the Barro Valle, when I don't my bit in Lambasa. Pula, Nadango Prosan Garce, Goer Craki, the Televio Navarro and a radio figure, Nadomi Vit, Venerango Chanibuka, Omoni Namus, and the Teleta Navarro and a Radio Fiji One, Nando Mewitisu. Radio Fiji One, Nando Mewitisu.